Afternoon, gang. Yes, it's Wednesday afternoon, the 12th of April, 2017. A warm welcome, welcome along in an afternoon show today of United Kingdom Talk, boys and girls. Uh, I've feel, been feeling very, very washed out, actually, um, since Monday night. I think it was Monday night I was doing the karaoke and um, at uh, Central Station. Every Monday, karaoke at Central Station, 8 till 11.30 with cheap drinks. And uh, got, got to about, it was about 20 past 10. It was just shortly, actually, after Ray Reynolds left. And uh, I felt really tired all of a sudden. And I thought, oh, don't say I'm going to get ill, because this is a similar thing that happened uh, back in, when was it, last September, something like that, when I got the flu. Was it August? No, it was just after the flu injection, wasn't it? So, that yeah, that would be September. And um, I suddenly felt tired. And then my egg, le eggs, I don't have eggs. Now, that's 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 the other species. That's the females, the egg. I don't have eggs. I don't have eggs inside me. I don't. Um, and uh, I got the, the really aching legs and then felt dreadful. So it didn't get that far. But I just felt incredibly tired all of a sudden. Anyway, we got through the night. We Fortunately, Monday is a fairly early finish for me, um, 11.30. So I got in the carnival. Do you know what? I think I'm going to have to pull around the corner and close my eyes for half an hour. Um, but I didn't. Once I was in the car. So often when you're doing certain things, even though you're ill, you kind of go onto autopilot. Do you know what I mean? So you can continue doing what you normally do although you're not really up to doing it. So I man I did manage to get home without being too bad. Uh, and I got in, I had a tea and biscuits. I thought, I'll have a cup of tea and biscuits, see if I feel any better. And I didn't. I didn't feel ill, just completely and totally zonked out. I believe that is a, an expression in the Oxford English Dictionary, zonked out. Is that correct? <laughs> um... So uh, I went to bed. Um, I kept waking up every few hours. I went up to go to the have, have a wee, and I went back to bed again. Got up again. Went back to bed again. And then yesterday, of course, Tuesday, I woke up and I was still feeling really run down and tired for some reason. And um, I hard. I don't think I did much at all yesterday. Come to think of it. Um, and uh, last night, again, felt tired, was just laying on the city, watching various TV programmes yesterday, uh, last night. And then I went to bed, at qu I went to bed about 20 to 12 last night. Believe me, that's probably late for one or two of you. But that's really, I don't think I've been to bed at 20 to 12 for years. Years. Anyway, I got into bed and I thought, oh, you know, you know, and, and, and if you're used to going to bed later, you'd have trouble sleeping. I thought, I'm going to have trouble sleeping here anyway. Uh, and then suddenly I heard the clock chime and it, it went two o'clock, my chiming clock. I thought, oh, well, that's good. I've been asleep for a couple of hours, got up and had a wee, came back to bed again. And then I woke up at half past seven. So it was half past seven. I thought, well, I'll, I'll go back to bed for an hour and then I'll get up at half past eight and do an early show, like a 9.30 show or something like that. Anyway, close my eyes again, open them again. And then it was half past nine. I thought, oh. Oh, well, well, I'll get up now. And I got up and I didn't feel too bad. So I had my breakfast cup of tea, came up into the studio. I, I had, all the, <laughs> had all the stories. I had my, my, um, my, my um, preparation here. Stuff on the computer. There's always stuff on the computer. Yeah, you can have a look. Uh, where is it now? Number three. We're on number three. There we are. You see, there's all, all, always stuff up here on the computer. Stuff waiting to be read out. Your message is coming up there. And... Um, uh, so then I went on, on to Facebook. No Facebook. And Facebook wasn't working. Um, so we couldn't do a show. So I went up to the swimming pool, uh, had a swim. Now, they were doing um, mid-morning tea and cakes today for the members of the Sports Centre, which they do sort of once a month at various different times, sort of half past 11, uh, it was today. So I had my swim. I got out of the pool about 20 past 11, got changed. And I was about to go into the tea place. And I remember, and it's so nice of them to do that. It's all free, all free tea and cakes. I mean, so many different cakes. It's unbelievable. And you just go and help yourselves and biscuits and things like that. All free of charge. Uh, and then I remembered the last time I went to that, the they had the coffee and the tea. And it's not alcoholic drinks, just tea and coffee, which is quite nice. I think maybe orange juice and that sort of thing. But last time I went, the tea 
was made, and, and, and tea experts, including there's one uh, whose Facebook uh, message I'm going to read out in a minute as part of our Facebook updates features on the show, boys and girls. Um, uh, the tea, I remember, they've got like a, a flask with a push thing on the top. And that's full of very hot water. And to make the tea, they put a little tea bag in the cup and then they put this very hot water on it. Now, probably some of you are thinking, oh, well, that's what, what's wrong with that. Incorrect. Uh, 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 uh. Three big X's on that one, dear. The water has to be boiling. Otherwise, the tea tastes absolutely rank. I know some of you will be agreeing with me. Other people will think, oh, what difference does that make? Well, try it yourself. Make tea with boiling hot water and then make it with hot water. As in, I don't know, boil the kettle, then leave it for about two or three minutes and then make it with that water and you will notice a distinct difference in the taste. And I remember the last time I did it, they did it with this hot water and I thought, well, I won't, I'm not going to go. You know, cut nice of them... Uh, as it is, because they're wonderful staff at the uh, sports centre. I belong to the Living Well, which is part of the Hilton Hotel up in Bracknell there, and I go most mornings swimming. And um, there's all the staff are wonderful. They really are. Trevor is the, the governor, and uh, I think the person underneath him is Bianca, but she's leaving on Friday to go and take up a new position at the Wembley branch of their thing. Now, she lives in Reading. And I said, Are you mean to tell me you're going to be travelling to, from Reading to Wembley in the morning? She said, oh, yeah, but it's all different times. <laughs> Sob that. Sob that. Re Reading to, to Wembley. I said, are you going on the train? No, she's going to drive. North Circular Road. Jeez. She's very, very brave, I tell you. Anyway, so it's lovely of them to do it all. But I just can't stand tea when it's made not made properly. Another place that makes it like that is Frankie and Benny's. You know Frankie and Benny's? Lovely food, nice pizzas, and I think they do a bit of pasta and, and puddings to die for. Where actually me and my mate went up there last um last last week sometimes. And we had one of those, let me I wrote it down here. What's it called now? Uh an East Coast dessert at Frankie and Benny's. Very, very nice, dear. Yes. Ice cream and bits of biscuit and cream on top and all that. We only went in for that. Now, they, but we didn't have tea there. And the reason we don't have tea there is because they, they literally, literally, they bring over a cup of hot water and a tea bag on the side. God's sake, man. Why don't people know how to make tea anymore? It's all for, I mean, you know, it's acceptable if you go to Italy or France or Greece or even America. And they make it like that. In the UK, you should bloody well know how to make tea. How stupid can you be? Of course, it has to be said, you know, the particular room where they're doing the cakes and the tea, there is no hot water thing there. But they'd be far better off to have it. Why not just bring in a kettle and plug, plug the dove in? Oh, health and safety. Oh, piss off. Health and safety. What a load of old codswell. Well, oh, well, fine. I won't come then. Not coming. Not coming to your tea. Thank you. Until you learn to make it properly. <laughs> I mean, you could even eat even. It's even better if you make the tea with boiling water and then put that into a flask. OK, then that that would work. But you can't put hot water onto a tea bag. They haven't got a blooming clue of they. So I had that. Then I came back here. I had some dinner in my new oven. My new oven. I'll tell you about that later. Don't rush me, dear. Don't rush me. Don't rush me. We can't get it all in at the same time in my new oven. And uh, now I'm up here to talk to you. Incidentally, uh, the cat, <clears throat> Katie the cat is, is getting more and more messy, I'm afraid. Um, I'm having now to clean up twice, two, three times a day sometimes. She's not using the litter tray at all anymore. Uh, if, you're, if you're new to the show, welcome along. I've got a very elderly cat. She's about 18 and she's just uh, the whole of the half of the kitchen floor, the, the half that she's allowed onto. I've, I've kind of put a bit of wood across because there's a like, like a gap like that you know um, my kitchen there's a there's an island thing you know with cupboards underneath it so there's a gap like that what you walk through I've put a bit of wood up there now so she can't get through that bit so it's restricting her to half of the kitchen now 
and that that entire half is now covered in puppy pads and newspapers. In fact, I'm going to have to go up to the train station a little bit later, perhaps tomorrow, and nick a load more newspapers because <laughs> nick a load more metros. <laughs> I can't afford to buy. I'm not the amount of crap that comes out of the area, end dear. So, <laughs> so that's all covered like that. But the last uh, today, I thought I'd try, try, I'd try an experiment. I put her in the garden. It's not cold. It's not going to rain. So I've actually put her in the back garden, and I left her out there for a couple. In fact, she's out there now. You know, I think it's probably good for her to have some fresh air. Usually I put her out in the garden, she walks straight back in. Unless she's walking, doing round in circles. She walks around in circles, most of those circles. Oh, it drives you mad. It does drive you mad. She walks around and around in circles. If you put her in the garden, she she wants to walk straight back into the house. And I thought, oh, no, it's probably good for her to have some fresh air out there. So she's out in the garden at the moment. Hopefully it won't rain. I mean, perhaps I could attach. There should be cat umbrellas, don't you think? No, sort of little umbrellas that you can attach to a cat to stop them getting wet. I think that's an excellent idea and something that should be uh, advised on Dragon's Den. Oh, yes. Who's your favourite person on Dragon's Den? Mine's Peter. I quite like Peter and Deborah. Uh, Deborah Meaden. I could see old Deborah. I can see myself having a cup of tea with Deborah Mead and a good old chin wag. Oh, so Deborah, uh, so Deborah, uh, I, I do this chat show and I think it's an excellent idea. How much uh, could I have twenty five thousand pounds for you to invest in? And she would say, no, I'm sorry, I'm out. <laughs> Wouldn't she or something like that? All right. Let's say hello to some of you watching uh, the show this afternoon. Hello to Ricky Bentley. Good afternoon, Ricky. A little Iceland man. Hello, Ricky. He's getting married next year to his uh, other half guy. Uh, Adam's with us. Adam the Plumber. And excellent news, boys and girls. Adam the Plumber now has his website up and working. Now, just a moment, please. Let me just check I've got the correct correct address for him. There it is. AdamThePlumber.co.uk. Oh, hang on a minute. Yes, there it is. AdamThePlumber.co.uk. Look it up now. He's just got this website working. He's still working it, as I can see. It's still in black and white at the moment, boys and girls. Uh, but he's got it up there and running. AdamThePlumber.co.uk. And underneath it says, Welcome to Adam the Plumber, the plumbing, the plumber, plumbing and property maintenance. And you've spelt property and maintenance incorrectly, Adam. Now, the thing is, Adam, I'm seriously worried about that's bad. That's bad because it looks like, you know, you've just rushed together your website there, lovey. Would you do the same on a job? That's the question. You know, would my pipes be properly emptied by you, dear? Or would you half do the job? You must get that sorted, Adam. AdamThePlumber.co.uk. And it's taken him quite a while to... um. Uh, to get that going. Uh, interestingly enough, Adam, I think that's the 72 hours because you said your website wasn't pointing to your WordPress thing where the site actually is. Uh, they did tell you 72 hours, so that's roughly what it's been and it's just suddenly burst into life. So it must have been that. So you did everything correctly, Adam. Well done, mate. Well done. It is not easy, I don't think, to do websites and things like that, unless, of course, you're doing it all the time. You know, it takes a while to learn these things. Congratulations. Well done, mate. All right. Uh, but please sort your spelling out, lovey. Property and maintenance. Very, very slapdash, dear. Very slapdash. Not like this multi-award winning programme. You know, perfectly, you know, that I've just been rehearsing 10 hours to just do this show today. I have, lovey. Um, hello to Callum, who says, hi, Chris. I love your shows. I might phone in, make your day today. Yes, we might open the lines uh, if I've got time. Might open the lines a little bit later on. Greetings, Callum. I hope you will. Uh, Rod Brown, just a quick hello. He's very, very busy. I'm going to watch the recording later. Hello, Rod. Uh, Gustav says, afternoon and well on the Diamond Whites. I'm really looking forward to the show. Oh, yes, I'm sure you must be on your third or fourth bottle of that Diamond White. Uh, what is it? Is it? Um, oh, what's that stuff called? Apple. Oh, blimey. I forgot what it's called now. Cider. Is it cider, Diamond White? <laughs> is it cider? You're not bothered, are you, really? As long as it's cheap and it's got alcohol in it. Poor old soul. He, he tells me, he tells me he lives in Kensington, right? He tells me he lives in Kensington. And then I find out through my inquiries that he lives on the White City Estate, which is indeed part of Kensington and Chelsea, but is not an area where you would want to go. 
Oh my God, that is as rough as ours is. It's probably rougher, rougher than the, the white diamond that he actually drinks. If you ever drive in accidentally, of course, because you would never want to go there purposely. If you ever accidentally drive into the White City Estate, it's like there's so much light, it's like daylight. It's because it's such a dangerous area. And Gustav, I don't know how you might, must, you must be sorting out some of the lads around there to keep you, um, to keep you protected. That's all I can think of. That's what I've, they come to you quietly and visit. All right, Gustav, just pop, popped around to see you while the girlfriend's out. You know the sort of thing. Yes, dear. Um, uh, good afternoon to Shania, who's with us. Good afternoon, Shania. On the the most important week of the year, you know what I mean, Shania. Hello, my darling. Um, Oh, Adam, oh, thank you very much to those of you that are sharing the programme on your various website walls. It's very, very kind of you to do that. I do appreciate that. Thank you. Adam's already done that. Uh, Tim says, I will catch the show later. Connection appears to be up and down. What, your end, you mean? Yeah, there was problems. I think it was a Facebook problem. I don't know if it's the um, the internet or... No, no, it's not the internet because my internet's been fine. The internet was fine. It was just Facebook that was on and off a little bit this morning, OK? Good afternoon to Elaine. Sean is with us. Why have you got umbrellas up in the house? Uh, umbrellas are reflecting our studio lights. They are professional things. Would you like another look, dear? There we are. They are professional. Uh, so the, the light, the bulb is in the middle. That reflects on the white umbrella and then reflects the light down to me. Otherwise, it's too harsh. That is a reason for that, Sean. And I'm very, very surprised someone technical like yourself doesn't understand modern television techniques. This is a television studio, darling. And I'm very, very surprised, Sean, you didn't know that, lovey. But there you go, darling. You stick to your milk. I'll stick to my television programmes. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon to Alan Russell's with us today. Uh, carpool karaoke videos keep coming in. I quite like those. Carpool karaoke. Although I have to say... Um, I've written this down somewhere. Just one moment, please. There it is. Um, I was watching a programme last night, which I thought was going to be like carpool karaoke. What's that bloke's name now? You know, the American bro. And it's fantastic what he does. I think he's fantastic. And he's got a real connection. When people get in to do his karaoke, there is totally a connection. He was really good with Michelle Obama. She's lovely. I'd like to see her running for president. I think she'd do very well. Michelle Obama. And in particular, Justin Bieber. He just seemed to be, they're on the same level. You know what I mean? And other people have got into the car. One di He's had One Direction in the car with him as well, hasn't he? Um, as I say, Michelle Obama. Beyonce's been... I think Beyonce's been in the car. But when they're in the car, it's like they're having a conversation. It's not like an interview. And he just seems to get on with people. You see a lot of people doing interviews on the television. And you think you, you shouldn't even be doing that interview because you haven't got a clue what you're doing. I mean, in particular, I don't I don't like the interviewing techniques um, on a lot of the news programmes now. It never used to be like this um, when they're frankly, they're aggressive towards the interviewee. Have you noticed that? And for me, it doesn't work. The worst one, of course, of all time, Kay Burley. She is just awful, awful, absolute heart of stone. And I remember Kay Burley, she did have a show on LBC for a short period of time. I don't know if she left or got the sack or what. But anyway, she was on there for a short period of time. And her program was directly after Steve Allen. Now, Steve Allen uh, on LBC, when he does his programs on there, he's, he's excellent. And when he does the interviews, he's excellent. It's not like he's, he's, he's putting someone under the spotlight. He's just having a conversation with them, the same as I am with you now. He's like just having a conversation and it works really well. Anyway, there was a little bit of a changeover. Some of them, not many, of, actually, they don't do it on LBC very often. He's, I think he's the only one that does it. But he would talk to her. He'd get her in the studio before she was due on. Um, she was after him, I think. And he'd, 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 he'd try and strike up a conversation. And from his side, it was really good. But she didn't know what to say. She, it, it's just like she just did not fit in. I don't know what planet that woman's on. I really don't. And I don't know how on earth she managed to stay on Sky News all that time. You look at her when she's talking to you. Her eyes are just as cold as ice. There's nothing there. 
There's no person behind that face. <laughs> Oh, but that bloke in America, I can't remember his name now, he's excellent at it. Anyway, carpool karaoke. And I thought, because I never saw the first series, Peter Kay's Car Share, which I really look forward to. And I think, was it on Saturday night or was it on last night? I watched it this morning. I watched a recording of it this morning. I think it might have been on last night after the excellent programme Holby City, which I saw. Did you see that last night? Oh, at last. At last, Dom... Dom has dumped, um, what's his name? What's his name? Isaac. Isaac and Dom have been having this relationship, but Isaac, Isaac is very self, is very controlling and violent, and he's a horrible, horrible character. Not the actor, of course, he's just acting. Horrible character. And Dom is like his young other half, and he beats him up. And Dom has at last dumped him and is taking action against him. Good. At last. That's gone on for months, that has. Oh, now I'd like to see Isaac slung into prison and eaten by the lions. I would like to see that. Anyway, going back to the programme last night, um, Peter Kay's car share. So I thought it was like the karaoke thing. It was nothing like the sort. Anyway, basically, it's Peter Kay um, in a car and I like him. I like him as a comedian. I think he's very funny. He's in a car and this girl rings him in the car. And basically that's it. Well, I, 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 I didn't really know. I didn't see the first series. And I watched it and I'm sorry, not funny. I was really disappointed. In fact, I was so disappointed. I cancelled my series record. Very, very disappointing. Now, I put such a thing on the uh, Facebook last night about it. And indeed, some of you enjoyed the show. I know Shania enjoyed it. It was a couple of people who did enjoy it. Uh, Mark C., uh, who works at the Arsenal, he enjoyed it as well. But I'm watching it. I'm like, well, come on then. Make me laugh. Make me laugh. No. Didn't make me laugh at all. And I was bitterly disappointed by that. Because whatever he's done in the past, I've laughed at. In particular, I, I particularly like the thing where he did um, uh, a spoof of... The Dancing on Ice, Britain's Got Talent, X Factor, Talent Show. Do you remember that from a couple of years ago? That was hilarious, where he played a, a transvestite called Geraldine, who sung a Christmas song. La da 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 Which I thought actually was going to become one of those Christmas songs that people play all the time, you know, that go on for years and years and years. But that hasn't been the case, I'm afraid. No one no one seems to play that again. Uh, but he was excellent in that. But Peter Kay's car share, I'm sorry, not funny. Not funny in the slightest. So very, very disappointing there. Very disappointing. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look. Bum, bum. James wants to know what's that on the wall. Uh, that is a 40th anniversary Mandy um, uh, 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 disc as signed, which you can just about see that by Barry. Yes, you can see it. That is actually signed by Barry Manilow. And um, a lovely lady, Eloise, sent... I'm looking over... Why am I looking over there? Oh, that, you're, sorry. I'm, I'm looking over there and didn't switch that on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, a lovely lady called Eloise sent me that. She won it at a Barry Manilow um, raffle type thing. It was like a fundraising thing. She won it and she sent it to me, Eloise. So she sent me the um, uh, the Barry Manilow thing over there. That's exactly what that is. All right, James. Um, does everyone put milk in first? Oh, no, that's horrible. You can't put milk in first with your tea bag. Oh, I've seen people do that tea bag. Then they put the milk in. No, incorrect. Put the t oh, how many times do I have to do this one? Put the tea bag in the cup. Put pour boiling water on it. So as soon as it's boiled, don't switch it off. You pick up the kettle and pour it on while it's boiling. Then let it brew to whatever you want it to. Then you remove the tea bag and then put the milk in. Yes, it does make a difference. Alan looks like it's the same with me with his tea. So there we are. Uh, good uh, good afternoon to Stephen, who's uh, in Australia. Good day, mate. Um, uh, Callum says it's a pity you can't do a karaoke in Nottingham. Well, I could, Callum, but it's it's you know it's it's time. You know that's going to take forever to get to, my friend. 
was it what about two hour drive two hours there two hours back four hours to do it so that's four five six seven eight that would that's eight hours dear you know it's a long long time uh kareem's with us today hello my good friend kareem Gustav says, uh, White City Estate, how very dare you? That's Ealing. I'm in the Royal Borough, dear chap. By the way, how's life in Serbia, in suburbia? Oh, it's lovely out here. You wouldn't want, I wouldn't ever want to live in a city again. No, thank you. No way. No way would I want to live in a city again. You know, you live in one of those little block, little boxes with a couple of plants outside your front door, wondering if your house is still going to be there when you come back from a night out. No, thank you. Don't want to live in a city. Oh, you want to ha want to have a car? Yeah, you can have a car. One hundred and fifty pounds, please, to park near your house. And there's no guarantee that you will be able to do that. No, thank you. You stick to your city. I'll stick to our suburbia. Thank you, Gustav. Perhaps you could send us a little picture of sort of where you live. You know, the the tower block that you live in. What are you on the tenth, eleventh floor? Is the lift working today or not? Has it been cleaned out? What day What day is your day to clean down the stairs, incidentally, Gustav? Because generally, you know, people who live in a, like a block of flags, you all have turns, don't you, to, to clean the stairs and all that. What day is, what day do you do yours? Perhaps I could come and get a little video of that. That'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Sean says, is it bad luck to have them up? Proper umbrellas? Yes, of course. These are not like umbrellas to keep the rain off. Probably if you went out with these umbrellas, my, my light umbrellas, outside, if you, these are the light umbrellas, just in case you've joined us, boys and girls. Light umbrellas, light umbrellas. You see, light umbrellas up there. If you went out with those in the, uh, in the rain, I reckon you'd still get wet. They are light umbrellas, dear, not proper umbrellas. Do pay full attention to what's going on, Sean. Um, James Corden, thank you very much. And Damo says uh, it was indeed last night that um, uh, the Peter Kay thing was on. I was really disappointed by that. Tim says there was one good show on Carpool recently called Car Karaoke Showdown, which was on Spike a few Friday night. What's Spike? What's that? On Spike. Is that a TV channel? Is that one of the Sky ones? I don't have Sky here. We can't afford to have subscription television, do you? Not that and the mo and, and my and my two hundred meg virgin multi speed fast broadband thing, do you? Subscription television, I can't believe you people that pay for television. Do you know how much there is on Freeview and Freeset? There's loads. You don't need Netflix or Amazon or Sky. Freeview, dear, Freeview. Where's Doctor Who? Come on. Uh, thank you very much. BBC One, colour free. Thank you. With subtitles on page 888 and in NICAM digital stereo. And for those of you that have got it, colour. Colour, darling, colour. Um, Tim says that there was a car o karaoke showdown on Spike. The only trouble was that after a couple of shows, the series was rescheduled to one o'clock in the morning, which I didn't like at all, despite the fact that I was recording these on Freeview. Ah, so it was on Freeview. Thank you, Tim. Peter Kay's car share was on last night. The last two episodes of the first series were shown on Monday. Uh, Matthew says, who is your favourite comedian? What now? Blimey, I, I don't know, really. I mean, I I don't really rate many of them. To a uh, Bradley Walsh, would you class him as a Procledian? Bradley Walsh, he's funny. He makes me laugh. Bradley Walsh, v Bradley Walsh is very natural. He really is. I I've I chatted to him once. He was in the uh, King's Ed Theatre Bar. He's been in there a few times, and I chatted to him once. He likes my jacket. He says, That's a nice jacket. He said. Um, good afternoon to Deck Reed up in Scotland. Good afternoon, Deck. Jerry Green's there as well. Um, what's this? Uh, something to do with um, EastEnders there, as Tim Partington sent in. If I click that, I might lose my position. Oh, no, that's all right. Let's have a look at this. What's this about? EastEnders is filmed months in advance, but this week the soap added a last-minute scene referencing this weekend's Grand National result. One that Arthur galloped to victory in Saturday's Grand National, and the BBC show used the... Oh, hang on a minute. What's happened there? Used the win... Where's it gone now? Use the wind to shoo in a reference to legendary character Arthur Fowler. Producers added a scene where Michelle mentioned the result and her late father. But fans were quick to spot an error that made it obvious the scene had been added at the last minute. 
Oh, they're brave doing that. Thank you, Tim. I don't watch EastEnders or uh, any of the soaps, really. Um, Coronation Street or anything like that. Don't do anything to me. So there we are. Uh, Lee Evans. Alan likes Lee Evans. Um, I don't remember Lee Evans. I don't remember Lee Evans. Yeah. And uh, yeah, good. All right. Um, now, where did we get to? Let me just go back here. Yes, I was going to tell you about my uh, my new oven. I've had a couple of kitchen disasters recently, boys and girls. Kitchen disasters. Now, um, the first one was actually last week on... Now, when was it now? Let me think. Uh, it was on... Oh. Like, it was last Tuesday. That was my last... Uh, my first disaster in there. Oh, what's that now? Just a minute. That's oh, okay. That's I've got my that's my doorbell telling me there's someone out the front. It might not necessarily be someone. It could be a cat. I have cats wander past my door day and night, and it sets off my video doorbell. Don't ever think you can come and burgle me. No, that video has got you before you get to the camera. And people, anyone who nicks the camera doesn't matter. You don't think that video's stored. How thick can people be? They think, oh, I'll remove the camera, then they won't get me. <laughs> it doesn't get stored there. It doesn't get stored at some data centre over in the States or probably China, somewhere like that. Dear me. Anyway, so last, last Tuesday, not yesterday, the week before, Tuesday's kitchen disaster. So I'm doing my spaghetti arabeba better. I love spaghetti arabeba. There's a particular one that they do in Waitrose. It's not the Waitrose own brand one. There's two in little pots in the chiller cabinet. I can't remember the title of it now. Can't remember to make. But anyway, so you, you, I'm doing the spaghetti on the stove, on my um, on my old stove, which I've still, I'm still, it's only the oven I replaced on the old stove. So I'm doing the whole meal spaghetti in there. That's done. I've shoved these, the Arabiata sauce, or whatever it's called, Arabiata. Is it Arabiata sauce in the microwave? And uh, you can never get, I don't know what, why have they make it. It's got one of those plastic things that's got a lid, a plastic lid, and you take the lid off, and then it's got this, like, plastic, um, oh, what do you call it now? Like a film on top, and it never, ever comes off. It absolutely never, ever comes off. And um, what happens is that you, ta you, you take, you try and get the, and it breath breaks every time. So then you have to get a knife and go ch -ch -ch, carefully around the side because you don't want it to go too far and pull out too much of the sauce. That would be less to eat, won't it? So you take it off and you put that in the bin. Then you put the lid loosely back on top. You shove it in the microwave. I think you're supposed to do it for two minutes. I'd, I tend to do, I tend to overcook things. I always overcook things. I don't know why. That's just how I am. So two minutes I do and you put it on and off it goes. And this thing goes. While it's in the oven. You can hear it in the microwave. As it's bubbling away in there, you know, firing things. Often the plastic top blows off, but because you don't keep an eye on it, then you open it and it's oh, it's all over the microwave too. Oh, something else to clean. So that happens. Then I take it out. I give it a little stir. Then I shove it back in for another two minutes. <laughs> It's going like that while this thing's going around. And they go, bing, and then it's done. Right? Halfway through the second go, I take off my spaghetti, I turn off the stove, I get my sieve, I pour the spaghetti into the sieve, put the sieve back on the now empty hot water pan thing, and it's draining in there. All right? So then I get my spaghetti bowl, as kindly given to me by my friend, because he had two spare ones, one of which I shouldn't really say. I hope he's not watching this. I've already chipped one of them. I'm not a very careful person. I'm a bit clumsy, you know. I often, I often break, um, break plates and things like that. And I've already chipped. I mean, it's so easy to chip things, isn't it? You've only got to touch this thing on the side of the dishwasher, dear. I do, oh, oh, it's broken now. Oh, dear. It doesn't matter. Still use it. Don't have to chuck something away just because it's chipped. Don't be so blooming wasteful. God's sake, Matt. What do you want me to do? Use plastic ones? God's sake. Anyway, so I've got my bowl, and I've put that now next to the top of the stove. Okay. 
So remember, uh, my stove is there. One, two, three, four rings. Only I've watched one has been used, which is the one at the front there. Okay? I've put my plate next to that. The spaghetti arabeba bing is done. Opens the door. Uh, now that plastic thing is very, very hot now. So you've got to carefully get a tea towel and kind of wrap it over twice and then lift it out like that. Very carefully because it can slip out of your hands and it's very, very hot now. The, the the lady in Waitrose, Michelle, her name is, Michelle was very, very disappointed with me a little while ago when I actually dropped a bottle of um, uh, olive oil and sun-dried tomatoes on the Waitrose floor. She said it's probably the worst possible thing you could choose to drop on the floor. They had to get the special powder out. Special powder came out. <laughs> she went mad. Because she's nice, mate. Me, Shell, in Waitrose. She's a bit like this. Uh, as I come. All right, Shell. Oh, hello. How are you today? I'm all right, Me, Shell. Um, I've had a little accident. Oh, yeah? What you done? I said, I've dropped something. What have you dropped? I s oh, it's some um, sun-dried tomatoes in olive oil. And then she didn't say anything else. She just went to the back and got the special powder. The special clean-up powder. And she sprinkled it all over and started clean. Can I do anything to help? No, it's all right. <laughs> oh, dear. So you've got to be very careful with this stuff. So I'm carefully picking out, got out of the microwave, the spaghetti arabetta <laughs> plastic pot. And I put it on my cooker next to the thing. And I turned around. And at the same time, I'm making the tea. And as I turned back around, I thought... What's that smell? And I looked over at my spaghetti arabetta plastic pot, which suddenly, right in front of my eyes, just disintegrated <laughs> and ended up all over the stove. Because, of course, I've put this plastic thing down on the stove that's just been on. And it let, the way it disintegrated, you know, like when you see those films of them blowing up buildings, like tall uh, funnel chimney things like in power stations when it goes bang and it all collapses in on itself that's exactly what happens in the plastic pot <laughs> and i'm like no because that's one of my favorite meals i love the way it burns the back of your throat as it goes down because it's very very spicy very very spicy and um that was it no dinner so here I've got my spaghetti, which is now wet, and which is now starting to get cold, of course, still sitting in the sink in top of the spaghetti pan, and and spaghetti arabetta, which is now all over the stove, because of course the, the the pot's disappeared. It's just collapsed. It's all over the stove, and of course the stove is still hot, so it's starting to cook again. <laughs> So out came my trusty old blue rolls, which were available. Eight for about eight for eight for eight pounds. Is it eight? We can get about eight of these for eight pounds off Amazon. Very good. There's a little tip for you. Don't be buying these um oh what are they called now? You know, large toilet roll things. Um kitchen rolls. Don't be buying kitchen rolls from the supermarket, two pound a time, love. No, go on Amazon and type in blue rolls and you get eight for about eight or nine pounds. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So I had to get out my blue roll while it's still cooking and get it off. Uh, and of course, steam is coming off the cooker. For, and then I thought, oh, I'm never, ever going to get this off the cooker. How will I? Because the plastic now will presumably now have burnt onto the glass surface. Won't it? Not only that... In this sauce, it's probably full of sugar, which itself will stick to the things. I thought, oh, God, I'll get as much off as I want. And I thought, I wonder if I've got a spare one in the cupboard. And I went in my cupboard and I found a glass bottle, Waitrose own brand Spaghetti Arabiata. Now, I have had that before. It's not as nice as the other one. I can't remember the make of the other one. I'll, I'll try and remember for next time to tell you. Um, and I got that out and I shoved that in the microwave in a glass the glass um, uh, jug thing that I've got, you know, one of those Pyrex things. And I had that on the spaghetti. And it, it was all right, but it's not as nice as the other one. Nowhere near as spicy. Doesn't burn the back of your mouth. You don't need to drink water while you're having it. You know what I mean? 
It's a bit like that. So um, I, I cleaned up as much as I could and I saw the dried on stuff. I'm like, oh, God, how the hell am I going to get that off? Anyway, I went in the living room to have my dinner. It was just the way it went down. It was hilarious <laughs> when it collapsed, this thing. I had that and I come back outside about, about half hour later or something like that. And the, uh, the, the cooker had cooled down quite a lot. So I, I got the rest off with some more blue roll there. And I thought, how am I going to get that plastic off? Anyway, you could actually see the bottom of the the little plastic, what was a plastic jar thing, attached to the thing. I thought, I wonder if that will come off easy. And I got a plastic um, spatula. Never use metal on those things because you'll scratch it. That's it, mate. You scratch it. So I got this plastic and I went, and the whole thing come off. So easy. It just flipped off. I thought, you that's lucky. I thought it was just luck. So I didn't think I would ever get that off again. It, it went ping, literally ping like that and came straight off. And then I sprayed all the top of the, um, of the glass top cooker thing. It's an infrared thing, you know, underneath it, because I'm all electric here. Um, I sprayed all that with some Mr. Muscle kits and stuff. I left it for a couple of minutes and it all actually simply wiped off. So nowhere near as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to have to get someone in to do that, you know, with special chemicals and stuff like that. So that was disaster one in the kitchen. There is another disaster coming up shortly, boys and girls. Let's go back to some of your uh, messages first. Uh, Adam says, please say hello to Stephen Pat uh, as you, we are watching and unblocking drains. Hello to Stephen Pat today. Where are you all residing then, Stephen Pat? Are you somewhere? Are you in Brighton or somewhere like Stephen Pat? Are in the house. Greetings to you. Hello to Nathan Vaporboy Edwards. Um, nice to see you, sir. Sarita's there. I want to see the spaghetti bowl. What the one with the chip in it? I'll bring it to you next next time, Sarita. Okay. I'll try and remember. If I don't remember and I'm halfway through a show next time, tell me again and I'll go down to the kitchen and get it. There you are. See. Let me just make a note of that. Spaghetti bowl. Oh, I haven't done my quiz questions for tonight yet. Spaghetti bowl. Bowl required. Thank you. Oh, something else I've got to show you. Oh, and the Arabetta sauce. Sauce. Because if you like spaghetti Arabetta, you've got to try that brand that I'm I'm using, that I eat. Oh, it's delicious. I'll get it for you ne on the next show, OK? All right, Sarita. Uh, Sarita, is that a cat lamp behind you? Yes, there it is. Look at that. My cat lamp. Isn't that lovely? Eloise sent me that as well. Eloise sends me things. Isn't that kind of a... People send me things here. It's really, really not... Well, they used to anyway. Can't really send anything anymore because it gets lost in the post. I used to use and address the two brewers in Clapham, but um, uh, not everything gets through from there, so I've stopped using it anymore. I don't really have a postal address now, all right, darling? Um, Ray Reynolds says, one of the youngest members of the George Formby Society is on ITV tonight at 8 o'clock. He's 13-year-old James Bassett and on with Dawn French and Little Big Shots performing When I'm Cleaning Windows and Leaning on a Lamp. He's really good, so don't miss it. Oh, yes, uh, that's an excellent programme, is it? Dawn French, the Little Big Shots. These are children, uh, you know, of a young age who can do different things. They have lots of talent to show, so that's on tonight on uh, ITV in colour. Is that in colour, that one? Have ITV got colour yet, Ray? Uh, Mark, I said, uh, hello, Mark. Um, Shania's off to church. She, see you, Shania. Oh, you've got a rehearsal today, darling. All right. Um, come dine with me would be great with you. Ray, can't stand that programme, come dine with me. I think it's horrible. Horrible. Uh, you can invite people round, cook them a meal, and then they all slag you off. I don't think so. Not going to happen to me, because I'm not going to do it. Dreadful, ghastly programme. Ghastly, dear. Uh, Sarita says, why not heat the sauce on the stove? Uh, because if I do it in a microwave, I can do it at the same time, you see? Then I can do two things at once. I am multitasking. Oh, yes, I'm multitasking. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Gustav, I don't believe that's your ass. I think you're lying now, darling. That is not your place, darling. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> Gustav has sent me a private mess, a private photo of his um house, but I don't think it's his. I don't believe that's your house. I think you're lying in my face, dear. Lying in my face. So that was the first disaster. The second disaster in the kitchen happened on Sunday, Monday. 
So my new oven, which is working fantastically, my new oven is... Oh, hang on a minute. What, what have I done with those messages now? Oh, there they are. One second. I'll just close that down there. Thank you. My, um, my new oven, which is working fantastically, um, I installed on Monday. Now, on Sunday night, so I had my dinner on Sunday night. This is, this is, I'm come for, come forward a week now. Come forward a week to this week. Had my dinner on Sunday night. And after it, I thought, well, I'll take the oven out now in preparation for tomorrow. You know, when the new one arrives. So I'll get the, the old one out of the way. So, um, very easy to remove an old oven. And it's, it's, it's underneath the, um, the worktop, you know, so it's kind of built in. You simply undo two screws and pull it forward. That's it. I thought, oh, I can do that myself. So I pulled this thing forward and I thought, oh, that's OK. I, I installed it myself about 25 years ago. That's why I didn't fix it, because it's 25 years old. I thought, no, time for a new one. And uh, I think this, this was only £200, the one I bought. Hundred, I think it was £195 uh, from Amazon. It's a Russell Hobbs oven, so that's all right. So I pulled this thing forward. I thought, well, this might be a bit heavy. And I'm always very, very wary of my back. Because I did do my back in last, I think again that was last August or some, somewhere around that period. And uh, I, uh, although I wasn't lifting anything heavy, I, all I'd done was got bent down to pick up a pen. And um, so I'm pulling this oven out, right? And then I thought, well, I'll bend forward and take it like that. And I, I, I managed to get it and I put it carefully down on the floor. And I kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of crouched right down like like that and pick it up and I'm, and I was aware that it, it seemed to be my my stomach and chest taking the weight rather than my back anyway so I managed to get it outside the front door put it down outside the front door and I thought that's good then I cleaned the little area because it was absolutely filthy it was filthy under that old oven absolutely filthy ghastly dirty dirty managed to get that cleaned and um, so Sunday came and went, and that was all fine. Sunday night, I did stuff. Can't remember what I did Sunday night, Sunday afternoon. Um, and I went to bed, and in the morning, I woke up with a pain here. And the pain was here, let me show you. The pain is, was here, and still is, actually, from, from... It's kind of... Actually, I can, I can put my finger right... There we are. There, there, there you go. Which is just under that, that, that bit of bone there. That's where the pain is there. And it was all round there, but it's got smaller now. It's better. It's better now. And um, I must say, and it was it was a, it was it was hurting uh, to breathe in too far, you know. So I could breathe, breathe in some. Uh, all that hurts. Couldn't sneeze. Couldn't yawn. That because that was hurting. And I've got to say, had I not have lifted an oven, I would have gone straight to the doctor with that because it's in that area. You know, where people, oh, oh, and they clutched their chest because they're having a bloody heart attack or something like that. It, it was kind of in that area. But because I'd lifted the oven and I knew I'd pushed it into my chest, I knew that's what it was. So that was that that was the other disaster, really. The new oven came on Monday. Uh, within the time, they said it'd be 8.15 to 10.15, got here about 10 o'clock. Took the um, took the cardboard and the polystyrene stuff off it, and um, simply just pushed it into place and put two more screws in, and that was it really. Although the screws, I've got to say, the screws are they're not really holding it. I think the, 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 they're they're using the same holes as the other ones, and the holes have become too big. Although the oven doesn't seem to move, so the screws are in place. I don't think they're actually holding it in place. It it just holds in place on its own. So I think that'll probably be all right. Um, I'm sort of happy with that. And I've used it a couple of times already. I used the grill today. I had burgers, veggie burgers before, corn burgers before I come up to chat to you. And um, I used the oven yesterday to do some sort of, what was it now? I think it was a shepherd's, uh, vegetarian shepherd's pie, which I had yesterday. And it's all working lovely. So they're, they're my two disasters in the, um, in the, in, in the kitchen recently. Disasters, dear. Disasters. Absolute disasters, I'm afraid. There we are. Uh, we'll open the phone line. If you want to call in at some point. Um, oh, my God. Is it 50? Have I been chatting for 50? Nearly an hour. Uh, well, there's the phone number if you want to call in. Doesn't matter if you don't want to call in. 0208144377 is my phone number. If you've got Skype, you can Skype in. United Kingdom Talk is my Skype name. All right. So once again, 0208144377 
is my phone number, local London number, and the Skype in is all one word, United Kingdom Talk. OK. Um, Shana says, no, it's not rehearsal. Oh, it's Daily Mass. Although after we are preparing for Easter. I didn't know you go to Daily Mass. Not many people go to Daily Mass, do they? Usually that's um, quite quiet. So what time? That's very late, your Daily Mass. I must say, Shania, usually Daily Masses are like eight or nine o'clock in the morning, aren't they? Yeah. So um, that's quite a nice time to have a Daily Mass, isn't it? Right. Um, a couple of Facebook status updates today, boys and girls. Uh, Graham Lang. Greetings, Graham who noticed my Facebook status update earlier, which indicated that Facebook hadn't been working. Graham says, have you considered the cutoff and it going down might be a conspiracy to get you off the air by arrival? And it may involve the Secret Service MI5 and MI6 or even MFI. From Mr. C Conspiracy Theorist. Remember, you are being watched. I doubt that very much, Graham, because I am a Theresa May fan as I make no secret of being a big Theresa May fan. Therefore, I very much doubt anyone's watching me. It's only those evil people who don't like Theresa May. That's what it is. Now, talking of um, politics type things, I've seen this ghastly story of... of uh, here, here's a clue. Here's a clue, OK? It's a politician. It's a politician this today. Not politician for this phone. Since we say Thailand, it's in the same there. I trust us the years days ago. Yes, it's Ed Miliband, boys and girls. And here he is. Out of time and tune with the public. What on earth is he doing here? Look. It was in the Daily Mail a couple of days ago. The story says when Shadow Chancellor Ed Balls waltzed his way onto Strictly, his enthusiastic dad dancing kept audiences glued to their sofas. But now another Ed has tried to make a similar foray into po of politics into show business, but with rather more excruciating results. In a bizarre pop video spiel, from the Lady Caesar, it's the band, um, played members of 80s band Aha, doing an appearance on a comedy show, The Last Leg, and there's some pictures of him there. <laughs> oh, why do we keep losing the election? <laughs> because your brother should have led you. You might have won then, idiot. <laughs> the, the cringy skit shows the MP bopping awkwardly while miming the 1984 classic take. I mean, look at the state of him, dear. Move over. You can get another job, love. McDonald's are always looking for people, Ed. And you do like a bacon sandwich, don't you, lovey? Eh? Dear me, do me a favour. Uh, thank you. Uh, a couple of other status, Facebook status updates today. And then we'll do the birthdays, and I must go, actually. I didn't realise I've been chatting so long today. I keep, I keep saying to my mate, I want to reduce the shows down to half an hour. You know, uh, people actually, most people start disappearing after about half an hour. They do. As you've probably seen for the numbers, they start dropping then. Uh, I don't think people can take more than half an hour of me chatting. I'm sure they can't. Ed Hall writes, damnation. See, well, back onto the tea thing. I've run out of proper tea. I've had to start the day with an Earl Grey tea bag. Oh, they're disgusting, Ed. They're awful. They're just like drinking perfume, isn't it? Nobody should have to bear the heady scent of pressed oil of bergamot oranges first thing in the morning. Absolutely, I totally agree with you, Ed. So you'll know where I came from with the uh, story about the tea earlier, don't you? Oh, no, if you, I, can't, I can't imagine what it must be like not being able to have a cup of proper English breakfast tea in the morning. Some people drink Coca-Cola first thing. Oh, no, how can you even do that? Actually, I think Adam the Plumber used... Adam the Plumber, he won't mind me telling you, he used to be addicted to Coca-Cola. Yeah, he'd have several bottles a day. Nasty stuff. Thank you, Red. That's an excellent update. And I totally agree with you. Next time you get to that... Don't ever do it. Ed, here is my advice to you. Next time you go need tea bags, go and buy two boxes. Then you will never, ever run out of them. Take a tip from Chris. Oh, yes. And um, hello to Roger Twiggy Day. Who's, oh, hang on, we've got a call coming in here. Hello, Heidi, how are you, darling, all right? Oh, we've lost it. Did I lose, I think I lost that call. Never mind, I've lost that call now. Never mind, not to worry. Don't know how I managed to do that. Uh, Roger Twiggy Day. 
says the treatment of the passenger on the United Airlines really underlines while something needs to be done about the ticketing system for all airlines. Now, you may have seen that yesterday on the news. United Airlines were overbooked for one of their planes and um, decided that, I don't know how they came around to the decision of choosing this particular person, but they chose someone uh, who are asked to get off the plane. He started creating a row and he was literally dragged off the plane. Now, why on earth they let him on in the first place if they had decided not to let him go, I have no idea. But I, I, I don't see how you can drag someone off a plane. I will never, ever fly United Airlines. Disgusting, absolutely despicable way to treat a customer. Now, I have been on British Airways before, uh, and I've been waiting for the, um, uh, the, what do you call it, the... Um, Oh, the uh, the plane to take off. And there's been an announcement. And if anyone's available and could possibly go on the next flight, please come to reception. You will be given another ply, flight and, I don't know, £200. And they always get volunteers to go and do that. Now, whether or not Delta tried that first, I don't know. I don't know, but I've that's and that's happened a couple of times while I've been in British Airways. Indeed, I've been called personally to the desk once in business, in business. And they said, oh, hello, Mr. Redden. Uh, sorry to trouble you. Don't have to do this, of course. But would there be any chance that you might be willing to swap your seat with someone else? Only it's a family and they'd like to sit together and you're sitting on your own. So you could possibly move to somewhere else. If you want to do that, we're, 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 um, we're do, I don't know, we'll give you a hundred quid or something like that, something like that. And, and I, and I didn't want to do it. So, cause I had, you know, I you kind of had your favorite seat when you're sitting, sitting in those seats. So I said no, and that was the end of it, you know? So I don't know if they, they tried offering people something first, but how can you just drag someone up there? Anyway, Roger Twee Day says, where else do you pay good money for something? And if you change your mind and can't travel, that day you don't get a refund pass the ticket to a friend or take a different flight outrageous and he's absolutely right i would never fly on delta out airlines after that i think it's disgusting the way those people were treated or that person was treated did you see it? the video on there i'm sure it'd be on uh, youtube just type in something like <coughs> delta airlines drags pay passenger off and you'll find it there you'll be shocked if you haven't seen that video that you will be absolutely shocked all right uh, Shania says, we have a show, we have a, uh, a mass at three o'clock so more people can make it. I'm only going as I have two weeks off. Ah, oh, OK. Excellent, darling. Three o'clock's a pretty good time, isn't it? Yeah, that's an excellent time to uh, to have a mass in the afternoon. Good. All right, let's do today's. Uh, actually, we need to do yesterday's birthdays as well. Um, because we didn't have a show yesterday. So I need to go to events for that, I think. Events. Calendar, what was it? What's it? So 11th yesterday, wasn't it? I'm dying for a cup of tea as well. Quite a lot of birthdays yesterday. Here we go. Scott Mills. Hello, Scott. Very, very good friend of mine. Worked with me in Central Station for a while. Is a very young, 23 years old today. Happy birthday to you, Scott. All right, hope to see you again very, very soon. Uh, I'm not at Central Station this coming Monday because I'm away. OK, so uh, Wayne will be doing my night, just in case you're thinking. All right, so happy birthday, Scott, 23 today. Uh, Simon Gilman, all these young people today, 25 years old today. Uh, happy, no, this is yesterday, sorry. So, so yes, Scott and uh, Simon Gilman, 25 years old yesterday. Uh, Matt Cullen was also 25 years old yesterday. Mark Finch, 31 years old yesterday. Ah, oh, John McCain. Hello, John. 44 years old yesterday. Sarah Pearson Brown, 46 yesterday. We got Lily. Lily, hello, darling. Looking beautiful, Lily. 31 years old yesterday. Uh, Bailey Figaro, 28 years old yesterday. Zach Wright. Hello, Zach. Hope you're doing well. Birthday yesterday. Peter uh, Sandoval Medina, 25 years old yesterday. Kenny Manley. His birthday yesterday. And Marco Peruzos, I think I've got that right for you, was uh, 31 years old yesterday. So they were yesterday's birthdays, boys and girls. And today's birthdays, here we go. Jonathan Diggin, 36 years old today. Happy birthday, Jonathan. We got Rory Dyer. Rory, I haven't seen you for so long now. I hope you're doing very well. Happy birthday, Rory. Barbara Manilow Haynes. 
One of our lovely Manilo girls was 69 today. Uh, Mark Robert, happy birthday to Mark Robert. Ellen Lisa Bark, 52 years old today. Happy birthday, Ellen. Uh, Yvonne C. White, happy birthday to you. And Mark Whiter is 41 years old today. So there the birthdays. Let's sing the song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. All right. Enjoy your Wednesday birthday. That's it for me, boys and girls. Uh, tonight, I'll be hosting karaoke. That's at uh, the um, uh, the King's Head Theatre Bar in Upper Street, Islington. Starts at 8.30 and finishes at 10.30. Actually, Ray Reynolds is coming along tonight to try his luck at the quiz. All right, so that's quiz night tonight and every Wednesday except next week. It's not on next week. OK, tonight is quiz night at the King's Head Theatre Bar this Wednesday night, starting at 8.30 and finishing at 10.30, all right? Enjoy your Wednesday, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye now.